Mom, I entered the room and took my t-shirt and left. I didn't take your money. What? You liar! You have to produce that money because I don't have any other place that I can get that money from. If I come back to this house today, I won't that money inside my bag. I didn't take your money. I didn't take any money. I took my t-shirt and left. Cheesy! I can't find 
Also, sehr wunderschön. I was looking for this one, I saw this 9,700 in this bag. I remember you looking for 10,000. 9,700 in one. Chidi's bag? Yes. Could this be? Chidi! Chidi! Yes, ma'am. Come here. What's happening here? How did this money get into? Whose money is this? I'm sure. What's happening? Oh. Yes, sir. Jesus. Oh, my God. You mean? Huh? See? Man, out of the way here, I was beating the You never said anything, Chidi. Huh? Just clap me for oh nothing. No, it's not so what. And so what? Oh, so this is it, eh? Jesus. We shall see in this house. Uh, All you could say is, I'm sorry. We shall see in this house. Yeah. I'll get back to you, too. today's episode of Decisions. Today we're talking about justice delayed that you have just watched. And to discuss this with me today, I have Pastor Kesta Aipehai. He's the CEO of Kestech Solutions, ICT in Worry, and he's also a pastor with Reality Ministries. You're welcome, sir. It's so good to be here. Thank you. And uh, just by my near left here, I have Dickness Deborah Araba. She's a lecturer 
at College of Education in Wari. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, um, the first thing I'm thinking about is uh, we have a situation here where a son chooses to go uh, dissident in the family. And I'm just thinking, what kind of child would choose to take revenge on the parents? What is wrong with that child's foundation, Pastor Kester? Oh, it's very obvious that um, the child um, is a child that must have been um, nursing oppressive feelings. It's been, it's just the child that has been going through a lot of things that he has been bearing for a very long time. And you just find a way to vent out his frustration and anger. Okay, that is likely that he's been going through some things and nobody's aware apart from him. No. Okay, certain persons may have been aware. Okay, but he's been trying to curb it, trying to manage it, but mm -hmm. he's not been able to manage it the way he's supposed to. Probably because he doesn't have a godly foundation. Okay. He was not brought up in the martial and admonition of the Lord. Okay. So it is not connected to grace to be able to manage his frustration. Okay. So that means uh, what, what do you say about that? I agree with that totally. It has to do with his training. Because Proverbs twenty two uh, six says, Train up a child in the way he will go, and when he's grown he will not depart from it. So he didn't have a godly training. Okay. From the Script okay, I want to ask again. Uh, sometimes we see some some of us are friends. Maybe when we're growing up, you know, they tell you about some things going on at home, but they they sometimes find it easier to discuss with their friends than to discuss with their parents. If a parent is in a situation where he or she is not aware of what the child is going through, what the child is going through, something is there something the parent can do to actually be able to know how or what. His or our children are going through, Pastor Kester? Certainly. Yeah, what can that be? Number one, now with the, the kind of upbringing and the kind of affection that the parents established in the house, to give the child easy access or be able to repel the child from the parent. Okay, that's the child coming to the parents to, communicate, to talk it now. It depends on the kind of relationship that the parent established in the home. Okay. That's what will make the child have easy access to the parents or repel away from the parents and look outside for solutions. So when can, can, we, can we have any clear cut like guideline on how to build that kind of relationship? What's maybe an example? Good. Number one, like she said, she quoted a scripture that train up a child in the way he should, he should go. Meaning there is a God prescribed order there is a god's way a child should go okay now when there is a deviation from the way a child should go from god's own way or pattern and you try to use worldly or your own uh, ideas, ideas background to build your family Okay. You definitely will hit the rock. You see, the issue of family yes. was established by God. Okay. God is the progenitor. So, if God instituted it, yes. He has given us guidelines, principles, rules, okay. and principles work. Okay. For the fact that somebody says he doesn't believe in the force of gravity, who does it mean, does it, does it, mean not it will not fall <laughs> when, you climb, when you jump from a height? Yes. I right. agree with that. Good. So God has given us principles in His Word. Okay. Has shown us ways that a child should go. Okay. If you follow that way, say, mind you, the Bible says train. Okay. The word train. So is it deliberate action on good? It, it, the word train means to nurture. It means to discipline. Okay. The word train may also means to direct curtail towards a particular goal. Okay. Wow. Are you saying it? Towards a particular direction. So, so the direction must be known. Yes. The must be known. It's not something that's going to be easy because the child has his own will. 
the child has worldly influences around that want to deviate the child from that God's prescribed order. So it's 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 it's, it's a great responsibility on the parents okay. to be tenacious about it, to hold their hope on it that you must follow this way. This is the way that God said you should go. Okay. And you are you are you are you are under yeah, obligation. Yeah, um, yes, to be under the laws of God law. okay. if you want to have a great future. Okay. So so that must be established early enough. Because the Bible says she's seen thy child when there is hope. Meaning there is a time in life when it's almost looking hopeless. Not that there's no there's no hope. Okay. Right? Because then you have allowed the child to be no. filled with his own ways. Yes, and the Bible says a child left to his ways bring a shame to his parents. Wow. Okay, I, I, I get it. Now, uh Dickens, ma'am. I look at it this way that you can't give what you don't have. So for a parent to be able to guide the child in the way of the Lord, the parent is supposed to know the way of the Lord, right? Sure. Okay. So is there is there any any word you have for parents on how to first discover the way of the Lord before being able to guide the children in it? Of course. Um God says in my letter, it says he made them male and female to raise up Godly seed. So the, the the responsibility of the parents is to raise up godly seeds, children that are God fearing. Like you said, if the parents are not godly, they can't raise up godly seed. So a Christian would know that. Let me, because I'm a woman now, she has the responsibility to raise up these children in a godly way. And that's the focus, the, the, the goal that my brother was talking about. Okay. You, you, you know where you want these children to go. You know you have this respons responsibility. God is looking up to you. Uh, you know, the Proverbs say, say the, the heart of a child is full with foolishness. Mm -hmm. But that the rod of correction will drive it far away from him. Okay. So a child is born... Uh, in language, you will say a uh, clean slate. A child is, is born with like the brain is empty, and whatever language you put into that brain, that's the language the child would. Uh, we will uh, absorb yes, okay. and what we talk about uh, behavioral patterns, upbringing is a major part of it. For instance, this godly man doesn't drink beer, doesn't smoke, never sends the child to go buy beer and cigarette for him. Okay, it is. Very unlikely that his child will want mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. But this other one drinks, smokes, sends the child to even buy. You shouldn't be surprised if the child picks up cigarette, maybe even at the age of seven, <laughs> and starts to <laughs> because to him the child doesn't mean anything. It's what he sees that he imitates. Okay. So yeah. a, a, a godly parent should know that God is looking up to them. Okay. to raise their children in a godly way. Okay. Now, from, from the things you just said, I, I pick something from this training we talked about. If I combine the two, yes. that first, training must be deliberate. You must mm -hmm. be able to guide the children. And training is not just by what you say. Sometimes by what you do. Exactly. The children, will, you may not have said it, mm -hmm. but you did it, so they will pick it up. Okay, now, uh, before we take a break, I want to ask uh, one question that there are times when somebody has done something that is wrong and it warrants punishment, either by policy or by expectation and all that. And we are not sure who exactly did it. So when you are not sure who did something, you are a father, you are a mother, and somebody has stolen something, you are not sure, just as the mother of Ike has done. What is the best course of action in that uh, position, Dickness? When you are not certain that this is the one who actually did it. Should you punish a particular person, maybe because that's the first child, or how can you go about it? That's very wrong. You would uh, take the children one by one and ask them one by one. In the individual separately or yes, together, yes. collectively? Together you have asked and nobody says, nobody owned up. Okay. Now you take each child okay. into the closet yeah. and ask. And of course explaining the Bible, like, you know liars will go to to hell. I'm not going to punish you if you just tell me the truth. Everybody can make a mistake. I'm sure that those children, the one who did it, should be able to, to honor. 
But just picking on one and say it must be you, even when the person is saying, I'm not the one. <laughs> it's very wrong. What, what, what if the child has shown some tendencies like that in the past? Mm. Perhaps it could be the reason why the mother feels it must be that particular one. If the child has been stealing, and no other child has been stealing, it's been only that child, then it's likely the mother will pick on that one because you are the only thing. But he may be innocent at that particular point. Uh, that's the problem. Yes, it is a problem because who tell you something is that thief? You don't the thief. So definitely they will see you as the thief in the house. <laughs> and they, and in some homes, some children will want to hide under the umbrella. They will be stealing, but because there's a known thief in the house, <laughs> right? They will be stealing, knowing that the parents will blame it on that one that's already known. Okay. Until eventually, that one will be caught one day red and red. Okay, one, one, one other question. Even if the child has a tendency to do wrong, and maybe he's been doing it historically, does that absolve the parent of the kind of action that the mother took? Now, even if the child had been stealing before, before that time, now the child is saying, I'm not the one this time that stole this time. The mother's supposed to have been patient. Okay. There are better ways to go about it. And you can see the mother's attitude that even when she got to know that this is not the culprit. Okay. You still did not apologize to this. Ah, so that, you know, you can see that, that, that other issues. That other issues. <laughs> it's like it's okay. like she doesn't like this child. Wow. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll be taking a break right now and then uh, we'll come back to this issue to find out what are the other underlying issues and what to make a mother not to like one of our own children. I'm thinking about that. Stay with us. To support or advertise on this program, please send a mail to advert at colonialproject.com.ng or call plus 234-809-512-5565. Welcome back, viewers, to the second segment of today's discussion. We're still talking about justice delayed, and I still have with me Pastor Kesta and Dickness Deborah. You're welcome once again. Just before we went on break, we were talking about um, uh, a mother or a father sometimes maybe having uh, some uh, your children. Maybe sometimes you don't like someone you like, so it begins to tend towards favoritism and. I'm looking at this that in a home where there's physical evidence of like daddy likes this one, this is daddy's pet, this is mommy's pet. Sometimes we, we talk about it jokingly and all that. From what we've seen, it's looking like it may not be, but it's looking like the mother has preference for the little son. How do we see the issue of favoritism uh, in both in subtle and in aggressive manner in the family thickness? It's a very wrong approach to family uh, upbringing. You, all the children should be loved equally. And when there's even, uh, let's say, it's not even very clear, the psychology of the other children, it, it's, it's already going negative. We have examples in scripture. Uh, Esau and Jacob. Jacob yeah. Because one like this and the other one like that, there was no unity. You find that Esau and Jacob, they didn't uh, live like brothers. Mm -hmm. Again, come to Jacob, preferred uh, Joseph over all the other children. Yes. And at the end of the day, what happened? So it is, I would even say, it is very wrong, probably a sin for a parent to pick on one child as a favorite one, they'll always get the attention, they always get the best thing, they will absorb, absorb of any wrong, while the other children are looking, it's very, very wrong. Okay, but well sometimes what parents do is that, maybe there's one that is just, is the last one, is the little one in the house, so they just concentrate. It couldn't really, it may not be that they actually love that one more, but because it's the smallest one, they try to give more concentration on that child. Is it wrong that way too, Pastor Kester? You see, these children, children are gifts from God. And we, we, we are given the children to manage. Okay. They actually belong to God. And so parents should be very careful how you manage these children. If you see it from the perspective of you being a manager, 
that these are God's property. You will be very careful about what you do in the home. It's not okay for you to make the other children feel that they are disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at another thing. Sometimes we make decisions. We all make decisions in this life. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're making a decision, it's based on the information you have at hand. But you find out after some time that the information you have at hand was not um, uh, maybe clear enough and you may have made the wrong decision. Just like Ike's mother ended up blaming Ike. So when somebody makes a wrong decision and then follows up with a wrong action and later you realize that what you've done is wrong, what is the best way to go about it? The best way is simple. Everybody makes mistakes. It will only take a proud person not to take responsibilities for his or her wrong. And that's the kind of perspective or view I see about that woman. She's a very proud woman. person. Okay, and then she will raise a proud son. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and the rebellious son. You get that? Okay. She, she, she's, she's supposed to be... To, see, the children learn by precepts and example. Okay. Now, if you show the example of love, an example of being apologetic, they will pick it up. Okay. If you as a father or a mother can say sorry to your child, when you know that you wrong them, that child will do same to his siblings and people outside. Okay. Are we saying now that his mother, the best approach for her now to fix this rebellious attitude of her son is to apologize for her son? Definitely. She sowed a wrong seed and look at the result. Okay. Rebellion. Okay. She sowed the seed of favoritism, she sowed the seed of hatred, and it okay. ended up producing a child that turned her to be ashamed to her. Okay, now. What about the child? Do you, Dickness, do you have anything to say to the child? A child the child is there now, he's being rebellious to the mother, feels that the mother has wronged him and all that. One word for the child, what can you tell E.K. now? Hmm. When I'll tell E.K. to forgive, to forgive the mother and uh, do what he can, all he can, to still be good to his mother, to still his mother. Okay. Yeah, but uh, he's quite a big boy. If I'm to, to take his age, it's not out of place for him to maybe meet the pastor or if his dad is available to him, so that he can talk to the mother, let him embody what is because if that thing continues, it's going to get worse and worse. So because of his age, I'm saying now he can ask for somebody to talk to the mother. I'm really hurt. Pastor Kessa, final word for Ike, Ike and his mother. EK and EK's help there. I'm going to be speaking to you who is going through exactly the same problem. You see, all you just need to do, my dear, is first of all realize that you have wronged God. You sinned against God. And go to God and ask God for forgiveness. Then secondly, forgive your mother. She wronged you, you can forgive her. It's very possible. See, when you forgive her, and you see, she, she may she, she may have been she, or she may be the type that we don't want to listen to you, and that may be what's going on in your mind. That if I go to her, how will I go to her and tell her I forgive her? And she don't like me. She wouldn't want to. Just change your behavior. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, ma, Pastor Kesta, and the Kings Deborah for coming on the program today, and to you, Ike, and any other person like Ike out there. Uh, you've been told you just have to uh, rest your oars in forgiveness. Forgiveness can ease uh, anything. And to any mother out there who may have taken one action or another, or anybody who has done something or another and you find out that what you've done is not exactly right, it's not out of place for you to just say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry is not going to reduce your height, it's not going to change your color, it's not going to make you poorer. Yeah. Of course, it may not make you richer, but it makes you a better person. So I am your host, my name is Akimola Trace, and I invite you to continue to join us on this same program, same station, same time. Bye-bye.